Hi everyone, welcome back to Chopper's Garage and behind this door, that door, is a car I have promised myself for as long as I can remember. I've been obsessed with this car for as long as I can remember from my very early teens. I had a poster of it on my wall and um, I, there's certain films with it in that I watch over and over again. I've always wanted these, it just came up, I've just grabbed it. So come along with me and let's see whether reality bites or not and whether it is as good a car and as not necessarily as good a car but as cool a car as i thought it always was It is, of course, a Pontiac Firebird. Those of you that follow me on Instagram would have already seen this. So the story is, ever since I watched Smoke in the Bandit, I've always wanted a Firebird. Every time I see them in movies, I absolutely love the shape of these cars. I've always really wanted a bullnose Firebird, but the price of those is getting absolutely crazy. So when I was on the Trade to Trade site, which I've said before, is the most lethal trade site for any car dealer. It's a Facebook page where car dealers can put cars up for trade to trade sale. I thought it'd be a good place to get stock, but it turns out it's just traders getting rid of their toys. This came up and I thought it's time to grab one. The prices of these have gone so crazy. The reality of me having one was getting further and further away. So when this one came up at a reasonable price, I thought I'm going to grab it. Now I have to say there's going to be a lot of debate, hopefully there's some experts out there on what year this Firebird actually is. It's on the document as a 1981, but there's a lot of people out there telling me this is actually a 79 based on the shape of it. Some people are saying it's a formula, some people are saying it's an Esprit, I'm not sure, I, I really don't know. The, the chap imported it, he got it registered, I guess he was told it was an 81, so that's what he put down on the form. I don't know if he did it on the VIN number or not, but... It's a historic vehicle, which means this is actually road tax and MOT exempt. Yes, we need something to come back about the cost of the fuel on it. It's a 6.6 .6 litre V8. Now, that might sound enormous and that it's going to be horrendously quick, but the reality is back then with all the smog and emissions and all that kind of thing, um, Pontiac was saying these were only 200 brake horsepower. Now, there are others that say that due to the insurance situation at the time, they actually downplayed the numbers. And when these cars were taken away and rolling roaded, they were putting out 240, 260, which is still not an enormous amount of power for what is quite a big car. They're not as big as they look like when you see them. I, I thought they were going to be absolutely huge, but if you see it next to this Mazda 2 here, they're not as big as you think they are. They're, they're incredibly long, but they're not as big wide-wise. So yeah, so I saw this come up. It, it, like I said, it's not the exact spec I want. And obviously condition wise, those who watch the channel know the way I buy my cars is rough and ready and then improve them, add value and be able to do it on a budget. I'm not, you know, a YouTuber earning millions of pounds out of YouTube. Like I'm running a business like an everyday guy. So, you know, funds aren't unlimited as to my toys. The paintwork is pretty poor. It's bubbling in a few places. Uh, in delivery across from the US, this damage down here was done on the edge of the bumper. It's a bit like, I mean, I've been looking around this car and I have to say it's a bit like having an MGB of a similar era. Uh, era. Um, the panel gaps are pretty horrible. Everything's fitted together pretty much with wood screws on it. It's a very simple car to come apart though. That is the opinion bit about it. So, I mean, the first thing is, did it meet my expectations in terms of how it looks? Yes, I will say every single time I've opened the door and seen this car, um, when I had it parked outside and I was turning up to work, seeing it first thing in the morning, it's made me smile every single time. And the amount of my friends that are saying the same thing, sort of similar age group, they're absolutely loving it. The best thing is my daughter adores it. She's uh, she's an old soul and a young body. She's really, really, as well as Motley Crew, she likes Pontiac Firbirds. 
So she's absolutely loving it as well, desperate for me to take her to school in it. Now, obviously we're missing the screaming chicky off the bonnet because that's not got the right hood on it. It's got these two sort of louvres. Again, I don't know what model that comes from. So hopefully someone will be able to tell me. But there, yeah, so they tried the smoking band. It started doing the gold bits here and there. The wheels, obviously they aren't proper, proper honeycomb wheels like would be on a smoking bandit car. But what they are is in really good condition with pretty much brand new rubber on, which is none of the side walls are cracked or anything like that. It's in really good condition. Like I said, the paint work wise, we've got some horrible panel gaps. The bonnet's sitting high there. The paint is bubbling in a couple of places. Along here, it's sort of peeled off in the center there. The rubbers look a bit hard. I think that's actually metal there. And there's some missing down the side of the windows here. There's some rubbers missing down the side of the windows, which I'm going to have to get over from the US. We've got a bit more bubbling here by the door. And a little bit more down there. There's some holes through there. But it is an outrageous amount of rot. I have to say, these are all actually quite treatable. Overall, when we get underneath it, it is actually really good underneath. Really solid. I think someone's had this car apart, stripped the underside of it down, done a load of work, bolted it all back together again. Probably at the time they had this paint job done. Unfortunately, they were just let down by whoever painted it because they didn't do their prep properly. There's some areas that are okay, but there's some more flaking paint here. Mind you, it might have been originally black. I don't know. Because that looks like a primer and then black. Possibly it was. Coming round the back, the paint's not too bad. But we've got some bits here we need to sort out on the top of the boot lid. We've got a crack in our little door flap here. I'm really hoping we've got a subscriber in America that's really keen to help me out and get some of these parts across because I have no idea where to get them in the UK. Obviously, it's covered in dust. I haven't tied it out for you guys. You're seeing it rough and ready as it is. And all the Firebird logo is all painted black, which I'm not sure it should be. Inside... Oh, the door's really stiff to open. We've got some peeling trim around where the uh, where there should be a bit of metal around now, I think. And we've got this horrible red vinyl that looks like it was black at some point and someone painted it red or, or tried to have a go at black and it peeled off. I'm not sure. These fabric seats, I think they're genuine for this age of the Firebird. They're in really good condition. They're not exactly what I want. I want a black vinyl interior. But I think, again, running on a budget for the moment, what we'll do is just leave this, but I'd like to dye all this red black to tie it all in. Vinyl paint the door cards, you can get black vinyl paint, really vinyl paint the door cards, vinyl paint this centre section here with the automatic gearbox area, and then keep this fabric ears. At, at, at most, I will dye this black. But like I said, this is going to be a bit of a budget build. We're not going to throw enormous amounts of money at it. There's lots of stuff we could do to improve. But the first thing is I get it a good runner driver. So they put a headliner in it. The people that had it last, but they haven't fitted it particularly well along the side there. I need to have a little fiddle. They've broken off a piece of trim at the back there, which again, I can take that off. I can fiberglass behind it, sand it down, paint it, tidy up. There's no rear parcel shelf up there. Again, I can make a cardboard template for that, make it out of some, um, some flexible wood coat it in some black vinyl stick it over the top of that that'll be all good and then like i say improve putting this headliner in the dash the aluminium stuff on the dash there that could do with a little buff up but overall like i say the seats are really good it's almost like someone did at some point put some new seats in or this is actually quite a low mileage car i don't really go off the mileage on it at all really as being knowing whether it's genuine or not so if we hop in i'm finding i'm, I'm finding it hard getting in left hand drive i'm finding that, Oh, the way of getting in, I'm, I'm yet to, got a graceful way of going in. Door cards, all oh, the trim is pretty grim. Again, it can all be polished up, it can be painted. I hate this with these speakers in. I want to do something about that, maybe some retro grills that I can put over the top to tidy that up. Again, somebody might know. You can see it's just all held in by wood screws, like an MGB would be of the same age. So it will all come apart really easily. The problem will be getting the, getting the stuff. As you can see here, there should be some kind of rubber here, I imagine. I don't intend taking this car out in the rain, so it's not a pressing problem. Like I say, I don't know how bad the headline was before, but this, this doesn't seem to be fitted right at all. It seems to be just want to sit up there, so I'll probably glue. I don't think they've glued it on. I think I'll get that glued on or Velcroed on. So I think the dash there, I think that's reading 80,232. How genuine that is, I have no idea. I've got no paperwork with it. I'm not stressing myself out about that. We've got 
fuel gauge. This is all Bosch, so this all looks like it's been replaced later on. It all looks very new. Bosch fuel gauge, volt gauge, oil pressure, boost. Don't know what that's about. We've got no turbos on it. And then we've got Bosch dials for this stuff here. For the to, that's obviously aftermarket because it doesn't fit there properly. Uh, temperature gauge. Something's fallen down inside the temperature gauge there. Not sure what I should have here. The actual white's worn out, so I'm not even sure what those buttons are for. Again, hopefully someone watching will be able to tell me what that's for. I can't see any handbrake anywhere. So perhaps I'm being dense, but I don't see like a handbrake anywhere. So again, if someone can inform me where that should be. In terms of it starting, it starts like an absolute champ. A couple of pumps of the carb, a couple of pumps of the, uh, of the throttle pedal. And um, it starts up first time every time. He says, let's see. Oh, give it a couple of pumps this time. There we go. Idles quite nicely. Whether that's accurate or not, I have no idea. We've got our voltage there. Oil pressure is really good. I don't know what boost again. Tell me what boost is. I don't know what boost is, but that's in the middle of the gauge. Looks like she'll be all right. Revs cleanly. Now, although it's MOT exempt, I know nothing about the car. I know nothing about its history. So all we can do for the moment is have a little spin around the car park in it. And that's about as far as we can go until it's been safety checked. Steering is actually quite light. It doesn't feel heavy at all. You've got such a long bonnet out in front of you. It's mental how long that bonnet is. But the steering itself, is turning circle is quite good. And it's quite light. We're doing this in the evening. There's not gonna be any bit about, so we should be all right on that front. And like I say, idle is lovely. I've got no idea whether it changes gear or not. I've not been able to get a long enough run. So that remains to be seen. But I mean, as a runner driver straight out of the gate, I'm happy about that. I was told it was a runner driver it is, but the chap that had it didn't take it any distance either. go I don't think it's gonna change gear in that distance is it no, it hasn't changed there either so I don't know how long it should be before it changes uh, where's reverse reverse there So yeah, I say legally wise, it's taxed. It's MOT exempt, I can take it out, but I know nothing about it, so it's not really a safe thing to do. But the pickup is certainly there. We have no working fuel gauge, which is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So we need to get the sender unit out and see if we can bring that back to life, because I don't really wanna to have to try and wait for one to come from America. There's so many car shows on the moment, I'd like to take it along rough and ready. Now obviously our doors need some work as well because I pull on this and it needs one hell of a shove to open. So uh, we could do with tightening up the cable behind that as well, I think. Same thing with the other door. They both need a bit of a heavy shove to open. So let's have a look under the engine bay. Let's have a look underneath the car. Now I, I think when we have a look underneath the car, I'd be interested in you guys commenting, especially any of you know anything about these cars, as to how much underneath is standard and how much has been played with. I do wonder if the aggressive change on the auto box isn't something to do with some modification as well as in you know this is a bit more streeted it's a bit tuned because everything under the engine engine bay everything underneath it looks like it may well have had work so uh 
yeah, let's get to that. Have a look at that. So if any of you know anything about these cars, point out the stuff to me you uh, see that isn't standard. So under the bonnet, I know you're all going to look under here. For starters, I have to, well, I don't have to. I, I've taken this one out this side. It's just all held in by little wood screws, this stuff. I don't think from the factory it's much better, to be honest. Just had little plastic retainers here for self-tapping screws to go in to hold it in. But I wanted to take these out anyway because I like to want to respray these. But I asked the chap about opening the bonnet because it was a bit hard because there is a there's a cable dangling down the bottom here underneath the bumper, which from the um, booklet I was reading, the book in the car, it actually says that the release is underneath the front of the car here. So I don't know where they were from factory. I can't imagine they were just dangling dangling down there underneath the car. So perhaps if anybody knows, comment down below where the hood release is normally for these. I don't see one inside the car anywhere. So yeah, I take that out because you need to really pull this bit of wire they've set up here towards the front of the car quite hard to release the bonnet. So that's another thing to fiddle around with. But underneath the bonnet, all along the panel here, it's amazing the way this is set up. So the actual car ends here and all this nose cone is just all out the front. I guess just for decoration and crash impact because behind here it's all just fiberglass there is a metal structure there so if you did have a front end hit there is quite a lot of space between here and the engine yeah a big old bit of heavy metal back there but yeah under here it's all, all clean and tidy i've spotted a little bit of rust just down there not much at all but the rest of it is all really really solid looking around all the rubbers they're looking all good don't see any cracked rubbers all these arms and that are free of rust this looks to me We'll have a look underneath a bit later, but it looks to me like someone stripped this down at some point, painted it all up and put it back together again. Because it is all in good nick. We've got a Summit carburetor, but it hasn't got an air filter on it, so we need to sort an air filter out for that. And then Elderbrock covers for the uh, engine. Now, I don't know what's been done to the engine. You know, it looks like it's had a rattle can respray, but whether that means it's been rebuilt at any point or not, I do not know. All the leads don't look factory, so they look like they've been upgraded. You've obviously got um, braided hoses for a lot of stuff here, so that's been upgraded. There's our master cylinder. Around the other side, looks like a old air conditioning unit, I'd say that probably is, something like that. Again, comment down below if you know. But it looks like an old air con unit of some kind there. But yeah, it's all very tidy underneath here. We've got some paint on the timing down there. It looks like someone might have been timing. We've got a gates belt there, which is in good condition. That's a good condition belt. So I would say the engine's been well looked after. The old the dipstick is a difficult one to read. It's got all scores on it. I'm not sure where the exact point is supposed to be on it. So I think it might be worth getting another dipstick, but I imagine that's about the right level. It doesn't look that clean if we do with an oil change. But yeah, I mean it's difficult to say. Looking at the exhaust, looking at the engine, actually, looking down here, it's been resprayed in situ, so it hasn't been out because the spraying it doesn't go that far down so it's just a uh, one of the channels i like what does he call it he calls it a craigslist rebuild <laughs> some of you might know what i'm on about there but there's been a lot of new parts belts so a lot of new chrome so someone spent a bit of cash the bonnet needs realigning it's not quite sitting right as we've seen earlier but again it's it's solid it's all solid the um battery looks i'm surprisingly small i'd say for an engine this big but it seems to be doing the job so there doesn't seem to be any emergent, you know, immediate need to do anything here. There doesn't seem to be any oil leaking anywhere that I can see. But we'll crawl underneath and have a look as well. And luckily, with these being quite half the ground, we can go quite a long way without having to jack it up. So you can see here, all this, like the rubbers for the anti-roll bar and the brass fittings on them, seem to be good. It's been painted up like it's been taken off. All the bushes for the drop links look good. The springs are painted and in good condition. So are the shocks. They look like they might have been replaced. All these chassis legs are in really good nick. Again, all looks like it's been stripped down and painted to me. I can't see any oil leaks underneath. We've got some grease points here for the steering arm. I forget what you call that setup. With the two joints at either end. That all seems to be good. So I say it's not been dropping any oil on the ground at all. We can see the exhaust system, we'll have another look further down, but the exhaust system looks fairly new. There's very little surface rust on it at all. And the gearbox is painted at the back there as well. So it's it seems to be painted on the sump down here, so actually I might have to reassess my opinion as to whether it was sprayed in situ or not. 
because I'd be surprised if they're able to get this much painting done underneath without it being out of the car. Let me know what you think. So further down the car, we've got some welding there that I don't know if it looks like it's factory or not. I don't, wouldn't say that's factory. Mind you, who knows on this old American stuff what the quality was like. Or whether these have been added afterwards. Perhaps these aren't actually standard. Perhaps they're kind of a strengthening thing people put on. I don't know. The floor pans look good. There's only a little bit of surface rust here and there. It's a bit crusty here on the edge where the wing meets the body. But the rest of it looks like it's been wax oiled at some point and it's all in good condition like i say all the exhaust looks good you see the bottom of the transmission there again i don't see any leaking going on got two big old mufflers at the back let's go and have a look down the back end it's a big old boy isn't it again everything under here looks painted but again i'd have to say i think possibly this has been done in situ because there's overspray over the rubbers but again no sign oh hold on we've got a little leak there i don't know if that's off this or not i did have the mgb there actually so that might be the the red mgb's leaking out of the rear axle i don't see any wetness on the bottom of this one so actually no i think it's off the mgb but again everything looks all right petrol tank looks good no surface rust on that again no real rust to speak of at all it's very 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 clean underneath for the age really so there we have it, guys. They say don't meet your heroes, but I have to say I'm apt. I think I'm more pleased with this than it was my 911 Porsche. I don't know if that's anything to do with the fact that this is rough and ready, and I don't have to worry about devaluing it by driving it. I can only improve this and increase its value with the stuff I do. I don't know if it's just because I've wanted it so long, or it's just that I absolutely love that curve going down that body line at the back there. I've just always absolutely loved this body line down here. And I know a lot of you are going to be in the comments going, James, you've got an Acadian van you haven't finished. You've got a Sebring that you haven't done. You've got the turbo Saab that needs to go down. And yes, I've got lots of projects on the go and lots of toys on the go, but this is what it's all about. This is all about me enjoying what I'm doing. And you just don't know what's going to come around the corner. You really shouldn't delay doing stuff until that perfect time because you might never get around to doing it. So just enjoy your life now. And um, this is just something I've always wanted. I guess actually I haven't answered the question, which I'm, I imagine is going to be going through a lot of you at the moment, or a lot of you might be wondering about, which is how much. Now, those of you that know will know that a Smoking the Bandit replica, a proper one, fully restored with everything bang on, you can be talking anywhere from fifty to £80,000, depending on how well it's been done. For a decent a decent one you can be looking around 30 i have bought this for ten thousand. now some of you will think that's all the money in the world for something like this some of you will recognize that for what i've got that's probably a really good price if you were to have the work done by somebody else have all of this resprayed by somebody else all of it retrimmed and done then you may as well just go and buy a bang on one. I'm going to try and get as much of this done myself as possible, keep my costs low, and I think I can't go far wrong. I think as a good run and driver with good paint once we've done it, it's always going to be worth 20 grand. I think if we went hell for leather, really did a good paint job, got it all smoking a bandit with the screaming chicken, with the honeycomb alloys, retrimmed the interior vinyl, it could be a, a 30 grand car quite comfortably. We'll probably have to do the window rubbers and stuff like that as well. But for the moment, the plan is the sun is out. Lots of car shows are on the go. We're going to give it to the legend that is Chris after he says that he's going to try and do as much of the work as he can. No, we're going to give it to the legend that is Chris because I'm just so busy at the moment to get it running and driving nicely and safe. Make sure it's totally safe. We'll probably get it down more and get it MOT'd anyway, or at least get a pre-MOT done on it. And then we're just going to get out and enjoy it. I'll buff the paint up. I'll do some small repair areas. Just with any random black, I've got to blend it in. I've got a can of gold, which will just refresh some of these front grills and stuff. And just get out and enjoy it with my daughter. Make some memories. And then over the winter, now we've got our compressor and we've got everything else. We'll try and get all the bodywork done really nicely. So as always, value all your comments down below. Please let me know your thoughts on it. Like I said, if you're from the US, you can tell me anything about the model I've got here. 
know anything about it, great. If anyone's got any contacts for parts, please let me know as well. But as always, massive thanks for watching. And if you want to see how this project goes, make sure you're subscribed. Catch you again soon, everyone. Thanks for watching. By the time this video goes out, you've probably only got one more day to get involved in the raffle for the TX4 taxi. You can choose either the taxi or £950 worth of tech equipment. Don't forget, half of what we generate goes to the, the charity, The Grand Appeal, which helps families with terminal children. So hurry up, get yourself involved, and I look forward to the draw.